Right. So, um, based on the first session, what we have seen is uh, some of you have got your factor paragraphs written down in the Padlet already. There are still some, uh, I'm pretty sure there's still some pairs who have not completed their factor paragraphs yet. I'm looking forward to you uploading your factor paragraphs. Uh, just a point to note, actually, for the first, um, first video, uh, what you needed to upload was just the traffic hazard paragraph itself. Okay, so we do practice bit by bit, right? As we get better at it, then we attempt the second paragraph, and then we'll move on and attempt the evaluation paragraph. Okay, we do this in segments, even though in the actual exam we do this as one go. Right, I think it's a lot manageable based on our experiences with uh, your seniors that we do this in a staged uh, manner. So build it up like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so uh, before before I do an analysis of it, right, let's take a look at what the question actually is. So the two factors that we are looking at is of course air pollution hazards and against traffic hazards in an urban neighborhood. So when we talked about setting, please remember we need to in your factor paragraph talk about how. This is unique in an urban neighborhood. How the impact that you're, you're trying to push across is unique in an urban neighborhood. Right? That must come out. Okay. So as I'm talking about this now, I think some of you, if you think back or if you recall, or if you can, better still take a look at your own uh, paragraph that you've posted out. Have you achieved this? Did you talk about that setting? Because that I think is a key component that many a times is not done. Okay, we're not looking at uh, the comparison in this yet because you're looking at only one factor paragraph in itself. Okay, so uh, special thanks to the three groups that I've picked out here, the three uh, pairs, right? So let's take a look. The names have been removed to protect your privacy, but then we all know who you are. Okay, so um, let's take a look at some of the examples. The first one, okay, they talk about traffic hazards occurring when the speed, the driver speeds, drink drives, go past. A red light, right? This may result in traffic accidents. So actually, what's the key geographical term? They have correctly identified the key geographical term here is traffic accidents. Okay, this is very important, right? This is very important because if you don't talk about specifically traffic accidents, right? What, what there could be other forms of hazards that are uh, that that is more pertinent in the neighborhood, an urban neighborhood. Okay, so what we're we looking at the uh, further explanation of what the accident would look like a okay, crash into pedestrians, crash into infrastructure, or crash into other vehicles. So this is their definition. Okay, this is the definition of what a traffic accident actually is. Which is fair. Because if you think about it, if you don't tell me that this is your your, your idea of what a traffic accident would look like, okay, then there may be things that I will not classify as traffic accident. Okay. So bear in mind your marker, you, you do assume your marker knows nothing, okay, and you are trying to provide enough scaffold for your marker to have a clear idea of what exactly you're talking about. Okay, then the group goes on to talk about in the urban neighborhood. So talk about the setting itself, okay? Why is this a big pro a big problem or why is this a problem in urban neighborhood? Because they profess that there is an increased amount of vehicles, okay, compared to a rural area. This is very, very good. Okay, this is very, very good. Uh, because this is a, a statement of truth, right? So factually, it is correct. There is this. Therefore, with the increase in the amount of vehicles, you increase the risk of traffic accidents, right? Because there are more people on the road. Okay. So good. Until this point here, I think everything is pretty clear, right? I do want to bring in a point here. I agree with the content that is brought out here, but I would like to know. Why? Why so? Why is it that you have more vehicles in an urban neighborhood? Okay, why? What is the function of it? Is it purely because of fun? Right? Or is it, yeah, so it is, we take it as a fact that you do have this, but you need to give us a uh, indicator that you understand that there's a reason for this madness. Okay, in an urban neighborhood, what do you have an increase? Right? You must need to talk, need, it is necessary for you to talk about. Increased population density. Okay, so keyword, uh, population density. Uh, very, very important. You need to be able to tell us if you use population density, a key term like this, you don't need to explain what it is. Okay, right. So, so what if you have increased population density? Therefore, therefore, three dots, there's an increased need for transportation. 
right? More people need to be moved from one location to another location for the whole range of functions that they need to be going, going there for. Be it to purchase stuff, to do shopping, to go to work, to go to school, to find medical care, okay, whatever reason it may be. But the baseline is why do we need to have more vehicles and why do we find more vehicles? It's because population density is higher in these areas. Okay, so very good. Uh, good point raised, but more clarity needs to be there. Okay, otherwise your explanation component is going to be insufficient. Some negative impacts include injuries. Negative impacts of what? Okay, fractures, these are all correct. Okay, fatal consequence being the most serious one. This is also correct. Right, but give me a little bit more clarity. Okay, in what kind of situation will you uh, possibly get fractures, suffer injuries, and or in what kind of situation will you get uh, fatal consequence? Right, so link it back to what you mentioned earlier. What do you consider a traffic accident? In instances where a pedestrian, an errant driver drives into the crowd, loses control of his vehicle, you could end up with negative impacts like A, B, and C. Okay, so a little bit more clarity. All right, so this one, uh, clarity. All right, type of accident. This would help the marker realize very clearly that okay you know what you're talking about right you're not trying to smoke uh, pull a fast one on me you really know what you're talking about finally they move on and tell me an example okay for example in singapore traffic accidents cause 136 people to lose their lives in 8931 casualties in 2023 now this sentence here is a bit of a problem so if you talk about 130 people Losing their lives, so this is the fatality in the score. Okay, uh, casualties. Right, this structure of the sentence becomes a bit strange. So what I would do is I would suggest that you put the fatalities first. Okay, casualties next, and then you list clearly this idea in traffic accidents completely in the year two thousand and three. These two things don't move them apart. Okay, you put the traffic accidents with two thousand and three, or you put two thousand and three. Traffic accidents, the total fatality rate was 135, and out of 8,000, almost 9,000 uh, injuries and casualties. Okay? Right? So you talk about finally you try to link back hazards impact a lot of people. Okay? Effects are detrimental. Okay? So this generally is more or less there. Some details, some uh, clarification needed to enhance this answer. Trying to make the factor paragraph a complete factor paragraph here. Okay, a little uh a little short, maybe that's why, right? But some good things about it, okay, things like the term is there, there's an attempt to do some form of explanation, right? Attempt to give us some sort of uh, uh example to show that this is detrimental. Okay, this is detrimental. Let's take a look at the second one. Traffic hazards are detrimental. Okay, this is a different approach. I choose to start with the statement, right? Then you choose to give me some of the common, uh, commonly taken hazards, but note, right? There's no clarity in what we're talking about. So you talk about accidents. So my key term here is missing. Okay, so you think about this compared to what we talked about earlier. Where's the key term? I would rather you put the key term out front. Okay, you are looking at traffic accidents. Okay, be very clear about it on the ENTS. Be very clear about it. This is the key geographical term that I want to see. It must appear. Right? What happens when you have this kind of things happening? Uh, dangerous for people that can cross the road, driving, not obeying laws. This is good, right? Highlighting that there are laws that actually will mitigate against this, but it's because people who are driving don't always follow this laws. Okay. Attempting to cross the road, this is in itself a bit problematic because if you're not jaywalking and you're using the traffic light or the overhead bridge, the likelihood of you uh, being involved in a traffic accident is actually a lot lower. Right, so this one a bit problematic. So when you have things like this, right, this brings down your reliability score in your whole passage itself. Right, so if you if you are submitting something like this and you see this kind of markings, question marks, what do you mean, or you write inaccurate, or, or or false data, this is what we mean when we are doing this markings. And then move on to examples, okay, key year given, good, number, number, 
right? Uh, during driving, okay, a uh, serious case because it indicates the average more than two traffic accidents occur one. This is incomplete, right? So sometimes you're thinking and you're writing, right? You are thinking faster than you're writing annually. Daily, because if two traffic accidents occur annually, that's, that's a miraculous number, right? Is it monthly, annually, daily? Okay, you cannot expect the examiner to be the one who do, who does this processing for you. Okay, so this is wrong. In this case, your example here is inaccurate. Okay, all the good that you have placed in front, right, is let down by this final statement here. Okay, moving on, traffic hazards can lead to negative consequences like injuries and fatalities. This is good. Okay, Poss possible outcomes, right? Serious you know, uh, lead to disabilities of loss of life. Good. Okay, outcomes. This will affect. Okay, so this is a link implication. Good link implication. This very clearly shows you how this is detrimental, okay, in, in the form of an urban neighborhood. Right? Elderly pedestrians la, 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 cannot walk fast. Yes, these are another victim, another group of victims that are that are commonly uh, involved in this kind of incident. Right, in the crossing when we red light, traffic nowhere, knocking them over. Okay, so injuries and fatalities. Yeah. Right. So what is missing? What is the other very key thing that's missing that the previous group actually had, but this group here did not. The idea of why is it worse? in urban neighborhoods, right? Let's take a minute, read through. Okay, so there is only the mention of urban neighborhood in the very first sentence. That's it. There's no longer a link at all until you go to the very end where you make another judgment statement that is detrimental in the urban neighborhood. Why? Correct. So you take a look, why exactly is it a problem in the urban neighborhoods? Because if I remove the first sentence and the last sentence, I can just translate this into a rural neighborhood. Okay, and it will still more or less make uh, sense, right? From a grammatical standpoint, from an English standpoint, it will still make sense. But that's not true. Okay, so this key thing is missing here. Now, what happens when you miss key information like this in a factor paragraph? Your factor paragraph is taken to be then unclear. Okay. No, nah, it's unclear. It's not inaccurate. It is unclear. What is the impact of having an unclear factor paragraph? You will drop one tier point. Okay, so we are marking you in terms of banding. I will cover the marking rubrics uh, in the next video, right? But we're marking you in terms of banding. So when you are when you're unclear in one factor paragraph, you will be locked in the earlier band. Okay, you cannot be in band three. You will not be level three. You will not. You will okay if the other paragraphs are still clear enough, you may have a recovery and you could be in the middle of le uh, level two. Otherwise, you will be locked in level one because your paragraphs generally are like this they're missing key uh, descriptors, key explanations. Then there is there's no reason why uh, we should award you a higher level. Okay, so this is a killer, right? Not linking back to the question requirements is a killer. Okay, so to you, you may be thinking that as a as a as a candidate, right? I really I've really written that it's detrimental to the urban neighborhood at the start and then I came back to it. Right. But what exactly about the urban neighborhood makes this worse? Okay, so key ideas again, population density is very high. You have an increased need for transportation because you have so many people living in the same area and they have to go places for whatever reasons they have. Okay, so compared to a rural neighborhood, you wouldn't have uh, that kind of risk or that kind of potential for this mayhem to happen. Okay, so let's take a look at the third one. The one more detrimental than pollution. Okay, this one is a bit problematic here. I do not need you to take statements like this. Okay, I do not need you to make uh, stands, continue to make stands on every paragraph that you have. This isn't social studies where we mark my paragraph. So for open ended questions, okay, uh, great. Up. I picked this out because I wanted to show you this. Uh, for open ended questions, we mark in totality. So we will look through two or three paragraphs that you have, look at the evaluation paragraph at the bottom, and then give you an overall grade for everything that is there. So we will not mark uh, by paragraph itself, unlike social studies. Okay? So if you if you take a look at your SS, every time you have a paragraph in your essay questions, right, 
you have a score, a, L, a level score for that paragraph itself, and you'll be awarded the highest level score among all your paragraphs. Okay, in job, it does not work that way. It's a cumulative thing. We add it on. So the end of the day is what you have scored for all that you have presented in factor paragraphs as well as in evaluation itself. So because of that, I don't need to take a stand every single time you have a paragraph starting. Okay, so in your traffic hazards paragraph, your focus should be traffic hazards having an impact, not comparing the impact with air pollution or whatever other factor you're looking at. Okay, good. The traffic common traffic hazards include explanation of what you're looking at. Once again, these accidents, these accidents. Okay, so once again, I see this it means that this is from some data source that you guys just blankly copy and plonk it. Right. So once again, term is missing. Right. If you don't remember, term is traffic accident. Yeah, I sound like a broken record because I'm looking at uh, this over and over again. But I hope this shows you the kind of pain that we go through when we're marking, okay? Because you guys make the same mistakes over and over again, and it's not the same person. It's different people makes the same mistakes. So this is why it's a very, very big thing. But, well, better now than during your O-levels, right? So in 2021, this is an example, okay? This is the example area, right? Example, same thing, okay? How many accidents, how many costs by drink driving, reckless, jeopardizing the lowest the safety of roads and increases the risk of civilians involved in taxi accidents. Okay, this one actually is a little better, I think. Okay, traveling on roads because a risk because of reckless drivers. This is the accounting for why you have this. Okay, traffic accidents claim how many lives in Singapore. So this one example area here is good, right? Example is good. Take a look. This is what I mean by good clear example okay good clear example now when you link back to how getting an accident is going to be detrimental right this final sentence here is this group's attempt at the link serious injuries some injuries can prove to be fatal is that the be all and all okay what about handicap what about fractures Is losing a limb actually really the only problem that you have? What if you don't lose a limb? You go in a coma and you're hospitalized for six months. What happens to school? What happens to work? Right? So these are things that you have to think about and try a way to incorporate into your implication, okay? Link implication. Because with all these, then later on you can then compare clearly, oh, what's the impact actually? Right? How how is traffic hazards more problematic than air pollution right because if you don't have very clear implications right you only have very surface ones like this then it's very easy to take a, a skewed stance or your final evaluation may not be clear enough okay so this part here the link needs development okay so what i want you to do today is you go back, you take a look at your postings. Your postings should have some comments in built in already, right? If you haven't made your postings, then you have to make your posting, and you have to refine your posting based on the three examples I've shown you here. Okay, three examples I've shown you here. After you have done that, I need to repost your individual response in the same padlet. So I'm going to use the same Padlet, but this time I'm going to change the individual response post to pink in color. So the background is pink. The combined one, the one that you do in pairs or threes, will be in white. The one that you post as a refined version of your own, right? Please don't copy the thing and do adjustments. Rekey in your own factor paragraphs. This is important. I only want to see the traffic hazard paragraph. Okay, so this is the work assigned for today, right? Go back in, take a look at the comments I've provided for your pair work. If not, if you've not submitted your pair work, take a look again at the comments I've gone through with you here for these three groups as an exemplar. Go in, key in your individual paragraph for traffic hazards only. I do not need to see the air pollution one. Air pollution one will deal with it once your traffic hazard paragraph is more or less okay. Right, so the work for this second lesson would be 
to go back into the original palette and to key in your refined paragraph for traffic hazards, how it is detrimental uh, in a urban neighborhood. Reminder, key terms. Explanation of what in the world exactly would traffic hazard be? What are some implications of traffic hazards? Okay, why is it particular problem particularly problematic in a urban neighborhood? Give us the good full example, like this particular one here has a very great example. Okay. Okay, and finally link back to the cause itself. Okay, so for today's lesson, it's pretty straightforward. Now that we've gone through three of these examples, go and take a look at your own, take a look at the comments I've given you, and you can repost your individual factor paragraph response. Once again, individual factor paragraph response, same palette, but in pink. In pink. Okay? Right, so I will see you for the next lesson. Uh, where we will deal with the air pollution paragraph and evaluation, and I'll run through the marking scheme of how these uh, factor paragraphs are marked on New Cambridge uh, instructions. Right? So go ahead, uh, you can replay this video if you have certain things you want to look out for. Uh, otherwise, you can go ahead and proceed to transit on into the palette and continue with the work.